How's it going, folks? So another Friday at three, but this time we're just going to uh, shed this a little bit early. We have a special guest on, as you'll be able to see. Uh, last week we spoke about product. So based on our eco cycle, we have covered customer avatar, why that's important, why we want to target these guys, uh, knowing who you want to work with and who you're trying to target, and then essentially being the person they want to be and getting in front of them. And then once you get in front of those guys, you have to have a product that's going to fill their needs and wants. Uh, and this week we have, we're going to talk about marketing and how to use some sales tactics. Not, we're not going to say tips or tricks because I think that sounds a little bit sleazy uh, at times, but ways to just get people to know, like, and trust you, buy into you, want to buy your products without having to, you know, force an upsell or just really ram it down people's throats. And, and uh, Dan is obviously very good at this year. That's why we have him on. So I'm just going to let him uh, introduce himself. Go ahead, Dan. Hey folks, how are you doing? So I'm, my name's Daniel McCaffrey, for anybody who doesn't know me, I am owner of No Limits Fitness um, in Belfast, West Belfast predominantly. Um, and basically for the last six, seven years, I've been doing the whole the classic personal trainer thing, you know, just trying to get clients, trying to get good results, and trying to learn probably all the wrong stuff to be fair. I'm sure we've all been through it at some stage, you know. We're looking for the next Strength Matters certification. We're looking for the next Catabell cert. And then you get to a certain point where that all becomes irrelevant to a certain extent because there's only so much you can you can learn and, and give to your clients. So then it becomes the next the next important part of the cycle is right, how do I grow? And what most personal trainers I feel sort of lack lack skills in is business development, marketing, and that type of thing. How to run an effective business. Um, and that's basically what I've spent the last two, two and a half years really, really working on. And the results have been phenomenal. And um, we've grown, grown our gym. We've actually moved into a 5,000 square feet facility. And everything's going well. So that's, that's basically a back, background story. We started off a bit like Joe DeFranco. Like Joe DeFranco stole my limelight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we, we basically worked in a garage, 600 square feet. And then we just we grew into this over the course of five or six years so that's it really what i loved about that is the fact of the work that you put in you know the, the five to six years the two and a half years of business because it's very similar to our story you know uh, a 220 square foot loft space above a bar to a 2200 uh square foot three floored building to now a 5200 square foot and i remember the, the first day that uh we came in here we opened early on the saturday before our official opened on the monday and obviously a lot of people will know that I like to talk a lot. And John was like, make a speech. And I went to make a speech and broke down crap. And it was just overwhelming. It was just a case of 14 hour days, putting in the work, you know, investing in our education, our knowledge, not really knowing, to be honest, like, like a huge amount about how to run the business. Uh, the good thing was that we started on the smaller scale, so we were able to make things that didn't obviously affect us. But just broke down in tears, and I'm glad no one videoed it. <laughs> we're like, TJ actually has a heart. But it was just all that stress and all that hard work. And, you know, we had Phil Graham on a podcast there uh, the other week, and he was just talking about, like, he's able to sell products now that he doesn't need to actually promote them. So we were talking about his mastermind and stuff like that, and he's just like, I don't need to promote that. It sells out. Because he's built that no like, and uh, trust or love factor, anything he touches is essentially touch touches the goal. But that's... You know, he's been in the industry as long as us, like 10 years. So it's been 10 years of grafting. And I, I just love that sort of aspect. So uh, the role of marketing, as you say, we found that the number that we always band about is we've spent on average about £25,000 on education over the last sort of decade to what personal trainers are, are led to believe. Now I'm in the, the fitness industry and I deliver certifications. But the ones that we deliver, we think make a big impact to the client. And that's something that we try and speak to the students. Because what we did was we bought a lot of certifications for ourselves that had no real carryover or transfer to clients. So yeah, it's um, to impress. you're trying to impress other trainers rather than impress your client because the reality is your client doesn't give a fuck. Really? Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's like we I think we all get caught up in that rigmarole of Oh yes, look at this certification. Blah blah blah. Down the road has it. It looks pretty cool. Oh look, he's doing this RKC Catabell thing. Oh, that looks cool. Let's do this. And the reality is, you come back and uh, I don't know about you, but I usually come back after like a, a weekend of uh, 
mm-hmm. Annabelle certification or something like that, and you, you try to implement everything. Oh, that, that exercise looked cool. Oh, this one looks brilliant. Oh, I'm going to do this program. And you try to do it all. And then you're just like, you end up always going back to your roots anyway. So it's like, you know, you, you know your stuff. You've built, up, you, you've built up your level of knowledge. There's only so much. So if you take one week nugget away from it, then you can implement it. But there's a certain element. There's like a, a floor ceiling, really, when it comes to that, that type of education. When we, Sally, doesn't really want to know if you did a kettlebell, she just wants to know how to lose fat, really. Exactly. And it's, it's again, it's one of the things we talked about on the Caldwell course. You should have been there. Was like, yeah. these are, I was a Lance Roddy, mate. <laughs> it was like, this is a tool. We're not saying it's the best tool in the world. It's an effective tool when it's in the right hands. But don't be tied down and go, as soon as you leave this course, everybody does Caldwells. It's not appropriate for everyone. There's a learning, there's a process. This, but does it give you another skill? Yeah. And as you say there, you take maybe one thing from a certification and you try and apply it. There's a, a book of myself and John are reading at the minute, Extreme Ownership. You read it from, yeah, from uh, Jack O'Willock and uh, Beth Bobbin. And it's the call. Hey! Hey! What is happening, man? It's about. Yeah! It's about. I'm not getting the top off. Right. Uh, the book is about applying principles to business and. What we were saying to our guys, and I said uh, when we did our uh, staff meetings and presentations, it's like, listen, see from now on, we have great structure. We, I love the presentations, but I want you to now think about stuff that is we can apply to the gym, that we can apply to the business to make the business better because we're all running the same zone with mindset and motivation and entrepreneurship and stuff like that and, and learning. But it's like, right, what can we take to apply? And that was something... Uh, listening to Nick Mitchell and Phil Learning talking about, you know, they were talking about upskilling his trainers at UP and he was like, we'll sponsor courses, we'll pay for courses for our top guys and then our top guys come back and say, great, what can we apply from that? Or what they do is they get in some of the top trainers like Charles Poliquin, Christian Thibodeau, whether you like their stuff or not and, and see what they can learn from that to apply to the transformation plans. John's here. What is happening, Dan? That's a crack. How are you? Dan, did everyone, uh, did, did we get your why? My why? Yes. My why is to help 10,000 people by 2022, um, local people in Belfast, and we're going to do that. You're in a pocket? 2022. Uh, All right, but is it 10,000 people to be out of pocket, or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's 10,000 people to be in my gym, loving me. That's great, Yeah. Huh? Uh, That's good. Hi. Building our five facilities around Belfast. There's one we're actually opening beside Hybrid. I don't know if you know. Uh, well, that, that, that's what I was just about to ask you. How are you actually going to go about doing that? So basically, our plan is in the next in the next five years to max out um, max out one location. We're already we've already stopped taking applications or memberships for our, our location in West Belfast. So we're going to just take five people on a month, and once we get the our baseline membership, it's going to be 250 people. Um, we're again going to open up our second location. We've already scouted out a couple of couple of different um, areas. We've looked in South Belfast, um, East Belfast. Um, so basically, once we max out one, we're we're already starting to build the the other location, and then the same process applies. It's once we once we build that up to get the certain number, then we go. And the way we see it is impacting ten thousand people. Because most people are like, how are you going to know if you hit ten thousand people? It's like we have two hundred and fifty people in a location, and they impact their husband, they impact their, their dog, their sister, their whatever, because of our positive influence in their life, then that accounts for two people, three people, four people. So, I mean, is it, is it easily measured? No, but we're, we're 100% certain we're going we're gonna to reach that in the next, what, four years now? So, when we started uh, talking, now we were talking about, uh, we didn't want to make it sound sleazy or seal tactics or anything, because we are talking about marketing. But yeah. What Dan just hit the nail on the head was he's providing value. He is reaping the benefits of providing value. It's not a case of going, right, I'm just going to sell this person this and X, Y, and Z, which a lot of people think. Uh, you know, reading John Belford's book there recently, uh, The Straight Line System, The Way of the Wolf, you know, he's changed his stance on his ethical approach, but, you know, as he really? was saying, uh, well, so, yeah. he says in, so he says in his book, but it's not a case of turning no's into yeses. It's turning into maybes, thinks about it, you know. And then when they see the impact that, that has on their life, as you say, they're going to impact their partners, they're going to impact their kids, it's going to impact everyone around them. And, 
uh, and that's obviously uh, a phenomenal why. So uh, we just have a couple of questions, Dan. So as you were saying there, you stopped taking applications. So obviously, you know, you're doing pretty well. You don't have to apply really for, uh, you know, customers. So what, what are the things that you do that, you know, maybe personal trainers out there that can start applying now? Basically, you have to, well, number one, we, we all know it in, the, in the, the fitness industry, regardless if you're a nice guy or whatever, you need to get results, right? So if you don't get results, you're never going to have that sort of following that people are going to come and be like, because that's all people want. They want superficial goals at the start. And then I believe it's our influence on them as soon as they come in, then we have to start teaching them about, like basically give them an education on long-term sustainability, health, how, how better it is. But number one is always going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be results. You need to get results. And the only way you're going to get results is by knowing what you're doing and showing like 100% care for your clients. What I, what I see a lot in, in the fitness industry, and I'm, I'm probably one of the lucky few. I've never actually worked in an actual gym, if that makes sense. I've never worked in a, a sort of global gym. You know, I've never actually seen it, but I just heard stories from other trainers that I would know probably yourselves have probably told me a few stories um, about certain elements and certain things that happen. And I get a lot of clients coming to me from other gyms that maybe haven't had the best experience. Like one springs to mind, obviously mentioned no names, but they paid for a 12 week transformation. The person didn't turn up. It was taxing them at like five to six. I think the person's at the gym ready to go. And they're like, sorry, slap in, not making it today. Um, and that's it. Like, no rearrangement, no anything. Just, sorry, I can't make it. And that happened a number of times. And it fucks me off to the point where it's like, it's our business. Like, we're personal trainers. I pride myself on being really respectable. And stuff like that just brings it all down. So, um, once you, you're not going to get results that way. So, um, you have to show a level of care for your clients. And I think once you do that, naturally, good things start to happen. So, as we spoke about, like, I've, been doing this I've actually been doing it from 2010 but I had my first um like sort of running sessions and stuff from community centers from about 2012 and but that's how long it takes and so someone recently someone recently said to my wife and she goes like fuck Dan's killing it at the minute he seems to just like come out of nowhere and I was like I overheard it and I was like really (laughs) 10 years you fucking cunt (laughs) (laughs) But you know what I mean? It's like it, it, it takes time to build that level of um, level of authority, the level of trust, and yeah. Well, do, do, you know, Dan, um, do you know what uh, I find that a lot of people out there actually lack is the thing that they're telling their clients to do. Now we had a conversation about this here a little months ago. Yeah. And we were saying that uh, personal trainers a lot of time feel they actually invest in themselves. Yeah, definitely. A lot of time what they'll do is they'll say to your client, you need consistency. And that's one thing that I've found that uh, trainers don't have is consistency. Do you know what I mean? So the, the, the biggest, the biggest like, hypocritical things that they're telling their clients to do is uh, invest in yourself, be consistent. Well, just reverse that background and invest in yourself and be consistent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, we, we were lucky to a degree that me and John uh, have always worked together. So the case of, we would get a lot of clients, just as you were saying there, that had bad experiences, canceling rearrangements, you know, it's coming up this summertime, this is usually when the, the young PTs are wanting to go out and party, I'll just rearrange that client. And I've always been on that, elk. I was like, I'm working around you, now obviously that's a slight change now, but it's like, do you want to train at 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening? Cool, I will have someone there, whether it's myself or John or one of my coaches, to train you, because I'm giving you the convenience, because that's what you want, if that keeps you motivated, that gets you results, you know, it's going to benefit both of us. So, uh, as you say, that, that service is, is definitely top priority. Yeah. Anything else? Well, once you have results, you have care, then it just really comes down to, in my opinion anyway, it's the, the environment and the atmosphere. It has, to, it has to be right, it has to be nailed, it has to be friendly, it has to be, it has to be that third place to want to go to. So, it's work, home. Where else do they go? They go to the bar, do they go for food, do they go to this. You want, the, you want your facility to be that third place. You, you want it to be the, the place that they think, oh, I can't wait to finish work. You go here, make friends, whatever it is. But they, in my opinion, there's only them three. It's results, care, and an atmosphere. And once you have them three combined together, it's... So tell us some, some of the stuff that you promote uh, for care for your clients. I know you do a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, when we get them in, we'll, we'll sit them down, we'll have a chat with them, see what their goals are, then we'll put them in the our system. Um, so say someone, we Sally, wants to lose 14 pounds. We, we, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. <laughs> so if she wants to lose 14 pounds, say for example, um, then we, we'll sit her down and go, right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to set you a goal for X amount of weeks. And then each week we'll check in with her. Like even outside the class, you know, approaching her in the sessions, you know, Sally, how's it going? You know, how close are you to that goal? But actually personally checking in like via text or whatever every single week to see how close they are to their goal. And probably the most important thing that I don't think trainers do is probably logging the results to see so that you always have that reference point that you can go back to and be like, oh, Sally, you're 10 pound off now with three weeks to go. You've only four to go, blah, blah, blah. So we do that, and then we will always have a nutrition like sort of strategy session with them, where we sit them down and really dial in their nutrition. And we have had a shift in probably the last twelve months, and in terms of what we do, we want sustainable results. So it's like you know we we have adapted some form of flexible diet in our own version of it. It's not completely flexible, but it's just again it goes down to that education system that we want them to not have any guilt with having bad or so-called bad food so we go through that with them and then we just do like members events you know we'll take them out for a night out or we'll have a party and stuff like that yeah just that community feel that sort of yeah yeah should, i know you do like a, a member of the month and stuff as well don't you yeah yeah we do indeed uh i forgot to mention that actually so like every every <laughs> Every, every every month we do uh, we'll give our one of our clients so we'll sit down every week at our staff meeting and we'll nominate the top three clients of the week and then tax message coming through out way nice stuff nice stuff <laughs> uh, sorry lads just right, to so uh, client of the month will come in and we'll every week we'll nominate three clients three top clients between the between the coaching group and then at the end of the month we generally have an idea of the the top 12 clients, generally it's always the same people pop up, you know, in that three throughout the weeks leading up to the month. So then we have a decision that coaches like pro, almost pros and cons. Yeah, Carrie gets it because Act Y and Z, and then we sit and have a chat about it, and then we pick one. And we um, we used to give them a, like a 40 pound voucher to go out for food somewhere, but now we're just uh, we're giving them an Under Armour top with uh, no limits fitness um, stuff on it just to. Because they all want them, they all think they look cool. So, yeah, just just on that, Dan, I know we were talking about the book Extreme Ownership and it yeah. is about you know, ex Navy Seals yeah. and commanding sort of troops. I know that sort of stuff you and your coaches do, but do you do anything for the underperformers? Do you then like go right? I'm gonna need to spend a little bit more time with this person, or maybe get them in for a chat? Yeah, well, I mean, because we have that accountability system in place, um. Usually we can flag up um, pretty quickly, like the likes of our booking systems, Zen Planner, we can basically see who hasn't been coming to the sessions and then our focus shifts on our staff meeting at a certain point to them guys. And we're like, right, who's contacting X, Y, and Z? Who's contacting this person? Um, see why, what can we do? Can we get them in this week? Our main goal is to get them back, back in as soon as we can from that point. Um, because listen, uh, it's, we all need accountability, right? So we, we all need it, regardless if we're personal trainers ourselves, we need some form of accountability to, to move forward. And it's the exact same thing. Like, as personal trainers, we preach about consistency, about accountability, about blah, blah, blah. So we need to focus on the accountability to get them back in to make sure that they reach what... Because if a client doesn't get results, what are they going to do? Yeah. Gonna leave. Awesome. Dan, see you next week, lad. I'm out. Yes, mate. See you later. Right. So that's John out anyway. He likes to do them flying visits every now and again. Oh. Uh, so what was the last thing that you spoke about there, Dan? So we have uh, results, car, and service. Was it? Well, atmosphere, community, atmosphere. you know, it's that third place where people like to go. It's just, suppose, like, we've all, we've all been in a gym environment where, like, personal trainers are quite adapted. I mean, me and you could probably walk into any gym and feel pretty comfortable, right? Probably feel we could go and do anything we wanted and no one would even care, right? But we have to think of wee Sally, who's maybe 24 pound overweight, 40 pound overweight, whatever, <laughs> is went to the gym before, nearly died, trying some stupid kickback, cardio, stupid thing, and she's had a real bad experience. Plus, there's girls running about with belly tops on and full face of makeup, and there's mirrors everywhere, and it's just like, whoa, 
I just don't feel comfortable here. They don't know what they're doing. So our whole idea is just literally have the friendliest atmosphere out, have a real community feel where people actually chat to each other, they have a conversation. Um, and people are just like, we've had people who have been members here and they're actually good friends now who like, go out, their families go out for dinner and all together. Like that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. And I think we've created that from we were at a small gym and it's just led as we've grew because we focus so much on being nice people and being really genuine. And then I think it's just, it's just had that effect. Like if I was starting again, I would focus again right from the bottom and start in that community feel the whole way through, you know? Awesome. Like there was a, a gym, again, I'm not mentioning any names I went to recently. And uh, it's a very, very well equipped gym. Awesome gym. Uh, and then went in, I was training with my partner. And it's just, it's a gym I've been to before. And one thing I hate about it is the atmosphere. It is like a morgue. Now, this is probably one of the best equipped gyms in, in you know, in Belfast and stuff. It's just like, I don't get a sense of community or feel. And it's very clicky. Uh, you know, people know people, but it's not open. And that, like, I turned around to my partner and I was like, this is everything that I don't want my gym to be. Everything. Because there's a reason why these commercial gyms can charge so cheap, because you're just another number. You're paying for an actual space. You're not paying to get service. Yeah, we're and, just paying to rent our equipment. Basically, that's it. Yeah. And, like, the prices that we charge, I know it's a little bit more than, than yourself, Dan, but... What we turn around and say is like we got a lot of people going. There's a lot of gyms popping up. You've got your pure gyms, your anytime fitnesses, all these, the, the new uh, better gyms, and they're like, you know, worried. I'm like, no, th that gives me more heart and makes me more money. Why? Because when they come to a gym like uh, No Limits Fitness or Hybrid, they're going to be cared after. You know, I had a new client starting today who just came in off the street, and I was just saying to my boys, I was like, this guy's coming in ten o'clock. Make him feel welcome. Show him everything, uh, and really just get a feel. The guy went out was like. Love that, awesome. Was training in a commercial gym, so that's nothing I've ever experienced before. And I think it's we're almost getting back to the old school gyms. Of I remember being in LA Fitness, and when you walked in, there was someone at the desk, they give you a towel, okay, they're saying in a 12 month contract, but you know, there was a little bit of service, service with a smell, even though if they weren't fully engaging with you, but you felt you felt important. And I think these 24 7 gyms are, are sort of losing that aspect, so yet 100% atmosphere, I think, is, is super important. Uh, just on that Dan so I know people always say you know you've come out of nowhere you've expanded the business and stuff like that there. what if you had if you were speaking to your former self when you just started what advice would you give me and especially obviously this being relevant towards new personal trainers and stuff as well yeah well it would probably be <coughs> to learn more about actual business and Marketing because people, even personal training, I find that people think marketing is. I think you mentioned the sleazy. The, the think of that sleazy car salesman from like one of them films, like Matilda. You know the dad slicked her and yeah. really just sell you anything. Where I, I think marketing has way like way more branches than people actually believe it does. Like it's not people think marketing. You mentioned marketing. It's a Facebook ad. Yeah. The thing that you do, it's like having your branded t-shirt it's going out that extra mile and having like your under armor stuff or something really good and clean it's the way you dress the way you do your hair you no know, that's branding it's marketing it's how you do your facebook videos like what way you talk to people like you're probably a bit like myself like i i just talk how i talk i don't change if i'm doing a facebook live and the reason i do that is because i don't want somebody coming in here after me speaking prim and proper and then be like who's this guy cursing and jumping about like a head case, you know, I'm like, listen, that's me. That's who I am. Could I stop cursing a wee bit more? Probably, but I don't even realize I do it sometimes. And so to me, that's marketing. And also that with like stuff, like even what you do for clients is marketing, you know, so us giving our Under Armour, No Limits and um, top to the clients, that's, that's marketing. But people don't think people just think it's a Facebook ad or it's, this it's giving the client a prize it's giving clients something else it's that's all marketing it's offline marketing you know but it's it's still it's still a form of marketing so if for me if i was to speak to myself again like five years ago starting out when we had our first we 600 square feet and um, facility then it would be it would be really simple it would be always educate yourself enough in the training side of things but get to learn more about 
the actual how to run a business, like how to go on holiday, have your business run, come back and it's still there. <laughs> it's, it's still alive and nobody died. And that that's a big that's a big thing for me. And and once I started sort of implement them changes around two years ago, like it's just our business has just went and, and skyrocketed up and I put it all down to sort of just that thing. Like you'll probably remember your first time, right? Like I remember having like money coming in and like didn't know where it was coming from, didn't know who gave me it. It was just like people were coming in or paying like three pound a session or something like that. And it was just like, so how many people are coming in each week for, I don't know, just money in the pin. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's when we sort of had to get the grips uh, and we had some harsh words uh, obviously given to us and we had to sort of take as well, Jack and Wilk and those guys talk about extreme ownership and like how much do you think your success is down to the people around you as well? Like empowering them, you know, that, that's something that, that's in the book a lot. We, I remember when we started to bring people on board, coaches, admins, it was just like, I found it really difficult to let go. Yeah. And it was, That's the hardest thing, isn't it? Yeah. And I was just like, no, 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 I'll do that. I'll do that. And just getting swamped and nothing ever, ever gets done. And well, the thing is, we, we all believe nobody would do it as good as us ever. Yeah. I ever, like I am the best coach in Belfast. Like no one is way better than me. I mean, you get someone else in to do like do a good job, and you just won't admit it that they probably just did not maybe a better job than you. Who knows? But you're still, <laughs> but you're still at that point where you're like, you know, that my clients want me. Yeah. Everybody, if I turn around and say someone else is taking a class here, everybody's gonna leave. That doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Because they they buy you, they buy the the, the facility, and if you do it the right way, like obviously. Like you didn't just go in one day and say, right, that's me done with coaching, everybody, um, I'm gone, bye-bye, you never see me again. You know, if it's done the right way, you can transition. Like, like I, I only coach three hours a week now. Yeah. And you know what, I still love coaching, I'm sure I'm like yourself, like I still love coaching, I get such a buzz from it, I get such a such an energy rush, like I just did one on Tuesday night there and everybody was like bumming and blowing about it and I was like, like that, that excites me, you know, but... I also have to understand to go to the next level. Like if I have five locations, I don't have five dance filling the bike. So I need to create that internal internal community with my coaches and with my team. And that's what they really are. They're, we're, we're a team here. Like I'm sure the same as yourselves down at hybrid. Like all of our staff means so much to us that like I'm taking two staff away with uh, me to San Diego next week. Yeah. And um, the trip cost over four thousand pounds for the three coaches, well me and two other coaches. Like I'm willing to invest in them to make them better because I know in return, for one, they're gonna value what I just did for them. Two, they're gonna bring back so much more knowledge. And three, when they come back, they're gonna be so pumped up and so motivated that every single one of our clients will benefit from that. And that's another element of marketing that's again, it's not in the Facebook ads marketing, it's it's in the market of you're building your team and building your tribe so that they, all, what I always say to our team is like, I want them to always exceed expectations. So if we have an expectation to hear, we should always be aiming to get here. Why? Because we're better than the average gym. That's it. Yeah. And that, that's a powerful why enough as it is. And that's, that's something that got us into teaching and obviously, uh, you know, training people to become personal trainers and stuff like that there. And we still do a lot of that now to degree. Now, that may change later in the future. We've got our, our guys in the gym who are doing their teaching courses and stuff like that there. But we found that we can affect a lot more people. You know, if I have 20 people on my catalog course, they're going to have, say, 10 clients each, which is going to make my impact even better. And... It's definitely, it's, it's trying to look at that bigger picture because the same thing, going back to uh, other people that, you know, the Philip Rams, he's talking about his dad, like muscle and fitness. And I said, what's actually happened? He was telling us about how he has King's College, London, uh, doctors involved in all this. And I was like, the great thing about this is, this is actually a growing you feel. Like there's a community, there's a tribe there that doesn't need you. That's great to see you. But, and he was just like, that's it. The key to any, key, like, that any good entrepreneur, especially if it is, is leave your ego at the door. 
Yeah. You know, this is bigger than you. Helping people is bigger than you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, walked into McDonald's and seen the, the guy that owned McDonald's serving you. Ah, <sighs> true. You know what I mean? It's it's like they have a they have a bigger why. It's not making people fat, <laughs> but it's uh they obviously wanted the to grow and the only way they were going to grow is have a team of people who could basically, basically do what he originally started to do do you know what i mean so yeah. I, i'm 100% with phil i understand what he's saying as well so that's, that's 100% how, how much how much of it is it you know buying in or having like as john was saying earlier or why so for coaches you know starting off it's just like well i want to make a bit of money yeah. because they're you know most of the people come through and learn are probably ex-athletes or people who have transformed their bodies, whatever it is, and they think, I could probably make a career to this or I could make money. It's like 30 quid an hour or something, isn't it? Yeah. That's how many and, clients. That's 300 quid. Oh, that's sweet. Um, and listen, do you know what? Like, I would be an absolute liar if I didn't say at the start that's the way I thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I was looking for the next client to get the next, the next amount of money, and I was like, right, and it was probably the same as most clients charging per session people cancel last minute, all this different shit. So um, it's, it's definitely a form that you, I believe you transition into as you, as you grow. When you have that own money figure, I must make two grand a month, I must make three grand a month, whatever it is, whatever your figure is in your head, um, you'll eventually get that and you'll probably be happy for, if you're anything like me, I'm ambitious. Like I got the two grand a month, is like, right, I want to get the three. When I got the three, I was like, okay, I want to get the six. When I got the six, I was like, okay, I want to get the nine. Okay, I want to get, and just, the ceiling never, like, settles with me. It's like, here, okay, next one, okay. And you always want, you always want to move, but at the start, you're always thinking, I, I believe in monetary value, and I, I would be an absolute liar as well if I didn't say money motivated me now, still it does. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I focus in, my focus has drifted slightly from how much money I would like to make a month to how much money, how many people I can help. And the reason for that is I know if I can help more people and have a bigger impact in the community, my income's going to go up anyway. Yeah. Because we're having a bigger impact. So I don't need to worry about that. I just need to focus on that level of care that I spoke about and actually genuinely helping people. It's not about like, oh, how many clients. Um, one of my mentors, Pedro's Julian, says that, um, revenue, telling people how much money you make and blah, 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 is all for your ego, okay? The amount of profit you bring home feeds the family. And that's always stuck with me. It's like, so that's why the money thing became irrelevant. It's like, how can I have a bigger impact and help more people? And if I'm feeding my family, then I'm in a good place. Yeah. Just keeps the, 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 the level of income goes up is the more people we help, and that's, that's, what, we've, that's what we've focused on. And there's a good book, then start with why. And start with why. There was just, just as you said, that at the, you know, at the start of the year, we were doing our forecasts and we we're like, right, we need to make X amount of money. And, you know, I was talking to, uh, my mom was actually asking me, she's, whatever it was, cause she was asking what I was doing. I told her, and she's just like, how much do you make to make? And she almost was in gasp with belief. And I was just like, it's just a number, to be honest, because it, it's, it just seems as you expand your business, everything else just grows with it. And it's just like, well, yeah. And there, there's a great book, and we recommend it. Uh, Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Then I have it upstairs. You know what? Awesome. You know how much it cost me in the airport? $34. For that book? Yeah, I mean, I had it sitting in my shed. I forgot, <laughs> to, I swear to, I forgot to lift it. And I went, I seen it at the airport. I was like, I'll go grab it, sure, again, and wait on the way home. $34. I can't. I just can't read it. It's audio book for me. Audio <laughs> yeah, yeah. And his voice is actually pretty good. Well, I think it might be somebody else narrating it, but it's a great book, guys. Not even listen to it. It's just try and short synopsis. Not try and uh, sweat small stuff. Control the stuff that, that you can control, and you know, good things will happen. Because I know a lot of people out there, clients as well, suffer from anxiety and they worry and, and different things. Right, I'm gonna wrap this up. So, if you again, give us your top tips for. You know, someone trying to create a brand, you know, trying to market their business. Because I've got one of uh, our inner circle group here with me, Gareth. Uh, okay. He's in the new. What? Oh, I know, I can't see you there. I don't. There you go. Oh, Gareth, I met you before, didn't I? Yes, yes. So he would have been at the live event and stuff as well. So we're obviously going to talk some strategies. But 
you know, for anybody that doesn't understand, offline marketing is anything that doesn't involve the internet, you know, just branding, as Dan was talking about, clothing, leaflets, anything that doesn't involve, you know, uh, electronic stuff. And the online marketing, again, again, Dan will sort of tell you, it's not always about Facebook adverts or SEO or all these big crazy things. But if you were building a brand, what would be the tips or even just a business, what would the tips be that you would give guys starting off now? Okay, before, before you would even spend any money on Facebook ads, anything like that, I would really encourage you to, number one, be authentic and find out who you want to work with. Like, is it females? Is it grannies? Is it, like, grandmas? Is it dads? You know, who is that? And don't try to help everybody. Don't try to be like Billy Big Balls and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to coach everybody because then I'll be different from everyone. No, you won't. You'll just be the same as everyone. Yeah. Okay, so really niche down who you want to work with. Um, it could be bikini models, like, whatever it is, but find that. But um, to your I'm audience, I do this. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to be fully, fully authentic, fully transparent with your audience. And when you're talking, like when you're doing Facebook Lives, when you're doing Facebook posts, Instagram posts, whatever it is, Instagram stories, remember who you're trying to, trying to target. Because I get sucked into this when I was like younger and I was trying to probably impress Potty Joe by writing an article and speaking about all these different muscle groups and the high tempo and the ATP system and all like nobody cares. Yeah. It's not like gonna lose weight. Yes. Yeah. That's all you want to know. That's and, our audience. And it's probably getting the, the specific words that are gonna excite that audience and get them the elicit a response from you. And once you've got all that and you know who your audience is, then start pumping out like valuable information. Because again, like two or three years ago, I bumped into the guy. He's like, why are you putting that content? Like you're giving away that for free. I was like, yeah, like, I don't mind. He's like, sure, I've already wrote it. <laughs> I know, but you, you can sell that like an ebook. I was like, well, why would I? What's the point? You know, I have no aspirations to be selling a thousand million copies of ebooks. So why would I do that? So I just gave all, all the information out and it's all regurgitated, it's divided into different different elements and, and put pump back out there. So when you're when you're doing all that stuff, just get it out. And then once you've got that solid base and you start to get a bit of traction, people start to message you and people start to talk to you, then I would maybe start doing something like Facebook ads and Instagram stories and all that type of thing, really getting dialed in with who. But there's no point, like you probably say the same, Paddy Joe, surely when you, once you start Facebook ads, if you don't even have an audience or you don't know who you want to work with, Facebook will happily take your money. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? But if you're just going to target everybody, you're just going to be like everybody else. Can I, can I tell you the Facebook kicked me off? Oh, what happened? They completely deleted my account. They said I was uh, constantly violating the policies. And this is after a couple of warnings. So I would always give my side of the story an appeal. And it just went, no, it is. Having none of it. And uh, listening to a couple of top marketers and they were like, you know, if you build your business solely on Facebook, at, at some point they're going to kick you off or what Facebook does now is they create, you know, this algorithm where you have to spend more money and more money. Uh, and at some point if your business is built on that, it's, you know, it's doomed to fall. It's a bubble. Yeah, definitely. And so I've had to start with new audiences and everything and it's been fucking, oh. And here are you sort of now? Well, we're starting to build audiences and stuff again, but like getting all those ones back, we couldn't do it. So we're literally new pixels, new everything. This is some tactical stuff, guys. But well, yeah, that's great. That's great information, though, for for your your listeners. Like, I mean, if they they are going to because I think that's the way things are going with with the internet and with personal trainers now. It's like Facebook's where it's at. Blah blah blah. Facebook is where it was at three years ago. Yeah. When it was like eight p a click. For a website now you're getting 30 40 50 pay click it's only a matter of time before that goes to a pound two pound and the person who's willing to spend the most to acquire a client is always going to win so the people who are cheapskates and want to put two pound behind a video yeah well, no one's even going to know who they are i guess yeah. what, what do you think the biggest problem for personal centers now is they don't adjust their prices to actually yeah. what's happening in the market so if it's costing you you know 30 pound to get a client and you're charging 25 you're not making money yeah and that, that, that's, that's the problem, but uh, I, think it's a, I think it's an area. I think you'll see a shift. I think uh, in the next three, four, or five years, I think you'll see YouTube coming back with, uh, with a lot of cheap sort of... Oh, but that's, that's a completely different topic. Well, that's, that's something we're doing at the minute. We've got the Hybrid Fitness Podcast is launching. 
but it's all on a video series like this, which we can upload to, you, to, to YouTube. And then we've got the audio off that goes into your podcast. And then we'll have that all scribed and put into your blog. And it's just, again, we're talking very technical, but it's, it's done. We're getting about five or six. We've had some awesome people on there. You know, uh, for here, for you guys, for A3, Dan and Tom Morrison, for the podcast, you know, Ben Coomber, Phil Graham, we have Perry Nicholson coming up. Uh, we have a lot of top, top guys. And it's just giving that value, as you say, giving people value for free. Definitely. Yeah. Anything else, Dan? Anything you want to add on? No, I would just say if you if you are a personal up and coming personal trainer and you wanna you wanna get to the next the next stage you've been developing the next level, then just as Michael said earlier, we had a conversation. It was probably about two months ago. I think it was January, um, where we basically said that I said personal trainers are actually very hypocritical people, um, and they tell their clients constantly like, oh, why will someone not pay five hundred pound for my training or blah blah blah. And then when it comes to actually doing the work themselves and investing in themselves to become a better version of themselves, like they just won't do it. Like someone said to me recently, I actually paid Phil Graham recently to do um, my nutrition and it was £250 a month or something like that. So I was like, you're nuts. Like, you know all the information, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, listen, I'm investing in someone who has more knowledge than me because I know that I'm going to get a bit more knowledge, even if it's just one thing that I take away from him then I know I'm going to help my clients. So to me, it was a worthwhile investment of whatever it was, six months, £1,500, £1,800, whatever it is. Like I guarantee every single one of my clients has had a positive influence from I did that. And I think that's the biggest limiting factor that up and coming, not even just up and coming, because that's probably the wrong word, like actual person, physical personal trainers that have been in the industry maybe just as long as Patty. And Michael probably still are at that stage where they constantly give off about their clients. They are on Facebook. I see it all the time. Like, talk, oh, such and such didn't turn up. Like, if you want me, make sure you pay up front and blah, 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 all this yeah. bullshit. And it's like, listen, if you, if you run things the right way and if you do things the way they should be done, then you don't need to be... Wrong. You, need to, you need to just invest in someone who knows more than you and will help you maybe get from level four to level five. Yeah. That's all you do. There was, a perfect, there was a perfect example. Someone called me last night and uh, talking about that they had someone contact them about, it was a fitness provider, about a course that says that we uh, slandered their course, says that they're not recognizing, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, to the person, I was like, we don't, we don't deal in that stuff. So I think you've got their information wrong. She's like, oh, I've got sworn statements. I was like, cool, send them over, send whatever you're going to do because someone slandered us and that's not our business. And, what I'd say was we're the most expensive fitness provider in the north of Ireland and we don't see ourselves as competition for anybody. And she was just like, I think I called her bluff. She was sort of like, well, maybe it was one of your team. And so it was adamant that it was me. And then, oh, maybe it was one of your team and thing. And I'm just like, listen, it can't, it can't be proven, but that's not something you want to do. I think that trainee, personal trainers are scared, in my opinion, to put stuff out there in the fear that ourselves, maybe in the industry 10 years, which is, few and far between for a lot of people cutting them down or or you know slating them and this industry is about picking people up i think yeah definitely 100 percent. and one, one, of, one of the probably the big things that people can take away from from even conversations like this is that they have they have to be like forward and persistent with what they want to achieve like if like some people are like doing personal training as a side job or yeah like, like, where do they want to go? They need to find out that, that very important question. Like, why am I doing this? Am I doing it just to get 30 quid an hour? Or am I doing it like, to actually have a bigger impact or have a, a life of freedom? Whatever it is, but they need to figure out what route they're going down. And once they, once they find that out, I think they'll have more clarity and then they'll go and invest in the likes of yourselves, like a mastermind or Phil Grant's mastermind, whatever mastermind program is out there. But they'll be able to invest in that and then see themselves go from that trainer down here that even like I, I emphasize this point like even just one step like one step ahead of their development it doesn't need to be because people think oh I hire a coach I'm going to go from 20 grand a month to 300 grand it's like it doesn't work like that like business goes up it goes down it goes up it goes down there's peaks and troughs the whole way you'll see that I know uh, the Wolf of Wall Street straight line to success 
it's not a fucking straight line. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I, I opened this facility after spending forty five thousand pounds, like twenty five grand in debt, had twenty five grand in savings, wiped out within like six weeks of building work. Like the night I took my staff out for me, I had to get a lend of a thousand pound off my mum. Very generous. Dinner. But I wanted to do that because I was like, I have to. My mom was like, just don't take him out for dinner. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what do you need a thousand pounds for? I was like, well, just in case we need drinks. She was like, I'm not with him. <laughs> mom, we need drinks. <laughs> I was like, just, just get the money. I'll give you it back on Monday, whatever it was. I'm willing to go with that level of deepness. And I'll be honest, like that whole next month, I was like, stressed to the max, like thinking, fuck, did I do the right thing? Did I not? So that was probably a low point. Yeah. The opening was high. The next month was like a low point going, am I going to make the bills? Am I going to do this? I have the rent to pay, I have this to pay, I have bills, everything. And it was probably a low, and then you get a high, and then something will happen, like maybe 10 clients leave in a month, and you're like, fuck, what's going on? And then you reevaluate everything. So success doesn't go in a straight line. It goes up, down, up, down. And the minute you decide to quit on yourself, well, you're done. Yeah. Paul Moore spoke about that. He was like, listen, if you try something that doesn't work, you've tried something that doesn't work. The, yeah. He says the best people give up, or sorry, the worst people will give up. The best people will be persistent. And as you say, reevaluate what do I need to do next or what can I improve on? And I think that's, yeah, I think that's fundamental. So, Dan, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. As you say, we just spoke. A little bit of open honesty about some of the marketing stuff. It doesn't have to be really technical. Uh, some of that stuff obviously we teach in our mentorship and even on our free Facebook group that you guys are on. Uh, if there's anything you want covered, just let us know. We're going to finish with the whole uh, ecosystem of you know maybe selling and maybe some scripts and stuff just to help people. Uh, but as Dan says, we've built on that avatar. Who do you want to work with? Being the person or filling a void that those people need filled. Then obviously knowing what your product is, I think that's a massive thing with personal trainers. They don't exactly know what they give people. And if you can nail that down and make it relevant to your audience, you know, the the marketing and make them money becomes a little bit easier. So Dan, thank you very much. Appreciate your time, buddy. Uh, enjoy San Diego. Yes, I will do, mate. Send you plenty of pictures. <laughs> Speak Bye. soon.